Hello and welcome back to my Paradox Interactive Historical Playthrough Mega Series, playing uh, through the history of the modern day nation of Turkey, playing Victoria III as the Ottoman Empire. I am Admiral Jedi. This is video number three. We're going to pick up right where we left off, specifically picking up in the year 1878 following the Treaty of Berlin wherein the Ottoman Empire lost significant portions of its Balkan territories. Not, uh, not, this is not going to be the last time that happens. In fact, in this video, we're going to lose a lot more of it. So following the Treaty of Berlin, uh, we lost Bosnia, Herzegovina. We should have lost some portions of Bulgaria. I didn't want to lose all of it quite yet, so I didn't figure out really how to do that. We should have lost Cyprus to the British, but they absolutely refused to take it from me. I was just going to give it to them last time, so we got to figure out a way to do that. But anyway, following the Treaty of Berlin in 1878, what happened was a significant, not only was one third of the Ottoman Empire's territory lost to them, but a significant portion of their non-Muslim population was lost to them. So in all actuality, the Ottoman Empire essentially became an Islamic empire. Previously, they had sort of held it out as, you know, their, their pride and joy, if you will, that they were the overseer, guardian protectors of Christians and Muslims and Jews and all sorts of, uh, you know, cultures and religions. And they, were, they took a lot of pride in that. But what happened is those people took pride in themselves as well, saying, well, um, if we don't need to change who we are and we don't need to change our religion or our culture, why are we even a part of the Ottoman Empire? And a lot of nationalism rose up at that point, declared a lot of independence. Um, and we're going to see that. We saw that in these uh, states up here, Serbia and what's now Romania. Uh, we saw that historically speaking, but unfortunately I wasn't able to simulate it in the last game. In Bulgaria, we're going to see it in this game. And so what began to be a, a big question was, what does it mean to be an Ottoman? Now, for a while, Ottoman literally just meant that you were from the line of the House of Osman, the uh, acknowledged father, if you will, of the Ottoman Empire. But you didn't have to be a certain religion. You didn't have to. So we're going to see in this video, and we're going to talk about it quite a bit, that really they kind of leaned in to the Islamic nature of uh, what it meant to be Ottomans. A and so the Turkish question, like what did it mean to be a Turk as well? For a long time, Turk was a derogatory term where they would use it to put people down like, oh, that stupid Turk or that, you know, filthy Turk or something. Uh, not saying that it was, I'm just saying it was used like that a lot. And really it, it represented a lot of the people who lived in these um, agricultural rural areas of the uh, Anatolian Plateau. So what we're going to see and therefore do uh, in this, and we're going to start it right away by making by taking one action, is the, we're going to see that in this time that the Islamic nature of the Ottoman Empire came back into the forefront. And we are going to simulate that by stopping the suppress of the ulema, and uh, we're going to talk about that quite a bit more. Something else that happened in this time, actually in 1876, is the young Ottomans uh, provoked a movement to enable uh, constitution. And uh, we're going to kind of simulate that right now. Now, rather than actually go through it, because it's going to be uh, really difficult to do, it's worth noticing or noting that the first constitutional era of Turkey lasted for a whopping three months, uh, at which point the um, Sultan kind of said, you know what, not a big fan of this, uh, and just banned the constitution basically right away after three months. So I'm not really sure how we're going to approach, like what does it mean to have a constitution, right? Does it mean voting? Does it mean a presidential republic? I think what we're going to do is we're just briefly going to simulate that once I figure out what the heck I'm doing by trying to pass presidential republic. 
Uh, I'm not even gonna bother with it because the moment we uh, do it, it's going to have a revolution. And so we should see a counter movement here form for that almost uh, immediately and then switch us into revolution or not. Uh, so let's see what this uh, stamp out monarchism looks like. Uh, it's not a monarchy, no civil wars. Okay, um, so we're not gonna be able to do this. Instead, what I'm really counting on at this point is a, uh, a movement to uh, preserve, what are we preserving? Uh, monarchy. So let's hope that that happens. Now, while we're waiting for that to happen, and I'm straight amazed that it hasn't happened yet, um, we do need to continue working on increasing the clout of the intelligentsia group, so we're gonna boost our education. I don't know why I didn't do that before. I should have done that before. There we get, there's our movement. There's our revolution. Okay, cool. So uh, we're not gonna let this happen. We're gonna let it go for like three months or so. What are we in September? In fact, I'll just let it go until I have to choose my first painful event. And, and by doing that, we're going to simulate the fact that, yeah, the young Ottomans uh, tried to push through the constitution, and actually they did it. Uh, so we're not going to do that uh, because the game mechanics just kind of prevent it. And then three months later, it was canceled. So uh, Congress was disbanded and everything. So we're going to basically just let this go for a couple more months. And you know what? I don't even need to do that. Let's just go on in and say, eh, psych, we're... We're the Sultan. We're going to cancel this. That is historically what happened. It was prorogued, prorogued. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, after three months, and we just put everything right back to where it was. So we're going to continue forward because there's a second constitutional era that's coming up here in the 1890s, perhaps the 1900s that does need to succeed. So in order for that to happen, we have to really wrestle down these local governors hard and uh, I've got to do that I I'm just done trying to reduce their clout we need to increase everybody else's clout that's the only way we're going to be able to do it so let's keep going as part of our exploration of what it means to be Ottoman uh, I'm also going to throw in our next research into nationalism uh, okay so it only looks like We've got a few more days to even research this, which is fine. So we can go ahead and just push this through and uh, get close to it. Because this question of what it meant to be a part of the Ottoman state or the Ottoman Empire really was all consuming. And as I pointed out earlier, they're going to, they went historically uh, with this concept that. The, the young Ottomans and, the, and later the young Turks began to really reject this premise that the Ottoman Empire, in order to modernize, needed to basically become Western. Nobody ever said that, but there was all this importation of Western ideas, Western government, Western military, Western goods, Western industry, Western culture. And so the young Ottoman, the young Turk, again, two separate things, uh, we're not going to see the young Turks here for a, uh, a couple decades, began to say, you know what, enough. Um, we are going to double down on this concept of an Islamic empire. This is who we are. So we've already taken steps to do that. We've passed nationalism. We've bolstered, well, not bolstered, but we stopped suppressing the ulema. Uh, and the clergy begins to retake a, uh, a more present and respected picture. So I just thought it was kind of fun to uh, throw in a little research on nationalism there in keeping with that spirit. The year is 1889, and uh, I'm in the middle of helping the Northern German Federation with a, a revolution. And France has started a diplomatic play against me to take Tripoli and Libya. Uh, I'm a little bummed out about this, not be well for two reasons one it's too early it doesn't really happen until i believe 1912 uh, 1911 and the other thing that i'm bummed out about is it is not france that does it it's italy that does it 
not historically accurate. So, uh, in addition to the fact that I'm in a war, don't really want to stand up against France, probably couldn't stand up against France even if I wanted to, um, I'm probably just going to capitulate and let them have it. Because at least it will be that somebody took Tripoli and Libya, uh, which they should do again by 1911, and it'll buy me some time with France and yada, yada, yada. Plus, I'm in no condition while I fight this war helping Germany to really do anything. So, a um, bit of a bummer from a history standpoint and from a probably going to lose standpoint. But uh, it did allow me to bring in one thing that did happen, and that was, again, Italy made moves on the Tripolitania area in 1911. So they're going to get it, France is going to get it, instead of Italy, because Italy just can't get their act together um, a, couple, a couple decades early. The year is now 1893. We just passed egalitarianism. And uh, I did notice that it unlocks the Committee of Union and Progress Party. Uh, in Ottoman terms, I'm, I'm assuming this is an Ottoman-specific uh, thing. In Ottoman terms, the Committee of Union and Progress was also known as the Young Turks. And so that party now theoretically exists. Uh, so that's cool. And I was hoping to see where they were, slash are. I'm assuming that they'll be intelligentsia. Um, but I'm not really seeing anything at this point. So the Young Turks did not really come onto the scene until 1894. Uh, let's look around a little bit more and see if we see anything related to that party. And after looking around a little bit uh, and doing some research, we don't have parties because there's no elections. Um, because we are an autocratic uh, so, there you go. Uh, this is very interesting to me. Okay, we've got a movement for landed voting and no opposition. So that is good. Uh, the problem is we're quite a bit too early for this. So, um, the, there's not a second constitutional movement in the Ottoman Empire until 1908, and it is brought about by the Young Turks, who come into power uh, in Parliament and all that sort of jazz. So um, I have to think about this for a minute. The, I could either do it now, which I'm very tempted to do, because one of the other things we will want to do is switch to a parliamentary republic which is, of course, disallowed by autocracy. So perhaps we'll switch to the landed voting now and use 1908 as our, as our revelation, or excuse me, revolution to switch to a presidential republic. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. I like that. I like that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just switch over to landed voting now. And... Uh, I don't see anybody opposing it, so let's hope that it comes through. Now, the Young Turks were not terribly popular. They wanted to see a parliamentary movement, a constitutional movement, one that had an Islamic flavor to it, but they were very critical of Sultan, uh, I believe it was Abdul, Hazi, uh, Abdul Hamid, the second, who was in power for approximately 30 years. Uh, and they were suppressed and stamped out and basically were not really able to operate locally. So their power base grew overseas, well not overseas, but you know, in, in Western Europe, uh, where with, the new, with newspapers and the press and just coordinated effort, they really began stirring up the, uh, the movement. Uh, again, starting in uh, 1894. Their movement really came into full swing in 1908, which we're going to fast forward to pretty quickly here. Uh, but it, they're, they're worth um, talking about quite a bit because it was really them who, who helped bring about the 1908 uh, second constitutional movement where the Ottoman Empire had a real constitution in place for uh, quite a long time. And there you have it. Landed voting is passed. So that's good news. 
Uh, all right, here's our newly formed parties. Free trade, freedom and accord. Okay, where's our committee of union and progress? Okay, conservative party. All right, they don't exist yet, so that's a bummer. Freedom and accord party. Again, I think they're going to become the conservative, or excuse me, Committee on Union and Progress, or the Young Turks. So let's hope for that. We're going to put this to bed for a little while, get ourselves to 1908, and uh, figure out what to do from there. So, unfortunately, the election occurred, and I should have known. I passed landed voting, and guess what? Who's going to get all the votes? Everyone with the land. So the Conservative Party, once again, the local governors. I, I would assassinate all of these people if I could at this point. I mean, they just ruin this game. It's like, you know, you can't do anything. Um, I, I'm amazed I've gotten their clout as low as I have, frankly. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing the best that I can. I don't know how we're going to pass uh, any kind of relevant laws. Uh, historically relevant laws. I just don't know how we're going to do it, but uh, hopefully there's some kind of gigantic movement or something like that that can make this go through, because otherwise it's just... I'm just going to have to tell you what happened in history and not be able to do it. It's pretty frustrating. But we're going to keep trying. So, I mean, I'm trying to increase the wealth of intelligentsia and basically going through and looking at you know, what their expenses are, trying to lower their expenses for their commonly used goods. I've, I've, I've increased all their government wages um i have uh maxed out my educational institutions I'm, I'm building more universities all the time and everything to uh for clerks and and academics and all that sort of thing it's just it's just never enough these local governors are powerful from the beginning of the game it seems like to the end of it now that could be tremendously historically accurate actually uh, and I don't mean could be, but probably is. They had a, the local governors had a stranglehold on the country for a long, long, long time. Um, and unfortunately, the game mechanics just don't allow me to break through that without generating a, a revolution uh, that we could possibly lose. And so I'm probably going to do that um, with the goal not to lose in 1908 uh, and just hope that another country comes to my aid because otherwise it's going to be like fighting the entire the entire military and lose so uh, we'll see how that goes we'll push a real revolution forward and see what it looks like the year is now 1904 uh, and things really haven't gotten much better uh, I did realize that what I could do is just jack up the taxes and uh, do this minus 20% attraction of interest groups in government so you know okay fine we've we've Managed to bring intelligentsia up a bit, local governors down. Um, adding insult to injury is the fact that our ruler is local governors. Um, but what I'm realizing now is that his heir is intelligentsia. Uh, and I could abdicate once the heir is 18 or older. In addition to that, there is this coup which has begun because the local governors are, as always, angry. They're always angry about something. And uh, so I think what happens is when they're in government and angry, uh, they can sort of push something through. I think that's the way coups work. And again, that's a, a feature of, um, of Voice of the People DLC. So they want to flip back to autocracy. There's some level of historical precedent for this, I think which I've already mentioned, where, you know, the the capability to vote and uh, the Constitution was sort of rolled back. Now, we simulated that earlier, uh, but I think what we're going to do is lean into this coup and um, see, let's see what it does here. Okay, uh, expected to... We'll complete. We'll fail if it has no progress. So does it just automatically gain progress over time? I'm not really sure. Perhaps it does like a... 
you know, events or, or something like that. So we're going to keep an eye on this. And, and, and the thought would be that we'll flip back to autocracy, abdicate when this when the air is for... Did it move? I wasn't paying attention. Um, abdicate when the air is 18, which will flip us back to... Yeah, it moves. Okay, it moves over time. Okay. Which will flip us back to intelligentsia, and then we can go ahead and pass... Um, what are we going to pass? We are going to pass a parliamentary re republic, or at least try. Uh, we're still going to have a revolution of some kind during that time, but I am hoping we can keep um, we can keep the local governor's influence down low-ish, hopefully. And um, and even if it does, it would be nice, as I've already mentioned, to actually have a true revolution. My problem is when you do a true revolution, local governors basically control like the whole thing. So the whole country practically. So I do have defensive allies uh, who will, you know, theoretically come join me if they're not at war with Russia. Uh, and so we'll see how that goes. Let's, uh, let's keep pushing the time a little bit. I was feeling pretty depressed earlier, but now I'm feeling a little bit hopeful. You know what? Never mind. That was a bad idea. Because our ultimate goal is to switch to a parliamentary republic, that apparently is disallowed by autocracy. So we're not going to switch back to autocracy. So rewound a little bit. We're going to kill the coup. Um, oh, we're not going to kill the coup. We're just going to basically try to kill the coup. And this gives local governors a minus 5%. So... We're going to keep going with the elections, and hopefully we can just boost intelligentsia up, wait four more years, abdicate the local governor, Sultan, and see how it goes. So, bad idea, but fortunately we got the chance to rewind it and, uh, and kill it. Well, there was absolutely nothing I could do. Once again, the local governors are completely in control of the entire... Ottoman Empire. Uh, oh, good. They get plus 30% uh, political strength, too. Sweet. So we're back to autocracy again. Nothing you can do about it, uh, I guess. Uh, all right. We're back to an illegitimate government. Don't even know what that means. Oh, look. We can only have them in government. Cool. Okay. Well, you know, just got to roll with the punches, I suppose. And again... Hopefully soon this guy will just abdicate and we'll put the intelligentsia back in and try and pass God knows what. Um, it won't be uh, Parliament, so uh, we won't be able to pull that off from a historical accuracy standpoint um, because we have autocracy. So I guess we'll just try to put a presidential republic in place. Of course, we'll have a rebellion. But I don't know. I just helped Austria fight off a, a huge rebellion. Maybe they'll help me fight off one. So that's uh, theoretically going to happen here in 1908. Let's dig ourselves out of this debt hole and uh, see what we can do. <laughs> oh, never mind. A revolution of tenant farmers to enact tenant farmers just happened. Which, of course, I can't do because the moment I basically said, yeah, sure, do that, uh, the local governors will be like, no. Uh, and they'll revolt, so, um, fortunately this revolution won't get any higher than 50, so, I don't know, we'll hopefully just try to make them happy and see if a universal suffrage revolution is going to happen next. If only I could have a parliamentary republic, uh, a revolution happen, that would be super historically accurate. That literally happened in 1908, so um, we'll see. Maybe I can just do some kind of... Oh, there's another one. What are you? Do we have another... Oh, no, it's the same one. It, okay, it probably just bounced in and out of, uh, out of that. All right, let's figure out what's going on here. Okay, the kid is 18, so we should be able to abdicate. However, we can't because uh, local governors don't have approval of minus 10 or less, which is super awesome. Um, we might be able to just kind of tweak that a little bit. 
we've got this movement to do tenant farmers. So we could try to pass that. Uh, let's see how this goes. Okay. So we might... Uh, because... Okay, there we go. So they're already... And I don't want to start a revolution even though it's going to start a revolution. So perhaps we can abdicate now. No, we cannot. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right, we can. So buh bye Yes. All right. Outrage, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, what do we want to do? Aristocrats become more loyalist. Or 1% become more loyalist. Let's do that. Okay. So. He's out. New Sultan is in. Who is Intelligentsia. Can we reform? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Yes. Okay. So, we're looking pretty good. Um... Let's see how this goes with the revolution. I think that's probably going to pop up here pretty close. Pretty soon. No, they're not even minus 10. All right, great. Well, we can maybe just pass tenant farmers and finally get rid of serfdom, which we should have gotten rid of in 1838. Uh, so let's see how this goes. I oh, have a massive budget deficit that I've got to deal with and uh, figure out that. And, of course, I'm got maximum taxes which are going to totally tank my intelligentsia uh, clout but i don't think i can really do anything about that until we all right that's neither here nor there historically speaking i'll get that fixed up okay here we are still in 1908 and historically speaking a lot should have happened here we're, we're doing the best that we can but it's it's just not working out i'm, I'm not i'm not able to pull it off the Young Turk Revolution began in July of 1908. Uh, we're shooting for that. Um, now, uh, my research is a little sketchy on this. On the one hand, it's called a revolution, right? But on the other hand, there are research notes that I have that are saying they didn't overthrow the government. They didn't. So I'm actually a little bit unsure if it was truly a military revolution or not. We're going to kind of roll with the military revolution anyway, just because it's like revolution, blah. You know, it's, it's a game mechanic that we want to go with. Um, and I can't do it really until um, we pass tenant farmers because I really don't want to cancel it. And uh, there you go. Okay. But in October of 1908, where we are now, what happened was Bulgaria declared independence. So we're going to simulate that by releasing them. Uh, now, they're going to get a lot more land than they got, eh, and we'll release them as independent. Okay. And that's going to really cut the empire up pretty bad, which is what happened that they lost significant parts of the Rumelian area here and with the balkan revolutions and all that so, so so this is pretty accurate map wise in terms of what was going on in 1908 um also i think um oh no, okay we already gave greece thessaly that's right okay uh so we are going to go to war with greece probably in the next video maybe not maybe in this video um, so we're going to go ahead and continue forward and, and try and stimulate this, um, this revolution into occurring. Okay, so tenant farmers passed. Uh, that's good. We're way in the hole here. I mean, losing all this territory, I don't have, well, I, okay, I just brought it back, I guess. I didn't have convoys. I've got tax losses all over the place. So this is really screwing me up game-wise, um, which is rough because that is what happened. I mean, the Ottoman Empire really just went into like a death spiral uh, pretty quick. I mean, they were in debt constantly, and, and you just can't play the game like that. I mean, I'm, I'm in the red already. Interest is stacking up. 
I mean, I'm trying to recover some, uh, and I'll just stop building at a certain point to bring me back into the green. They were unable to do that. So the next thing we're going to do is try and see what this revolution looks like. Now, again, I'm a big time cheater. Um, so we're going to just save it uh, so I can rewind in case something goes absolutely crazy. And what we're going to do right now is try to pass a presidential republic. That is not really in accordance with the um, the Young Turk Revolution. Really, it was a parliament that they did, uh, but we can't do that because the stupid coup happened and put us back to autocracy. So we're going to go ahead and do this. I'm expecting a revolution, and what I'm hoping for, because I have allies, like straight allies with these guys. Uh, okay, I guess that's a defensive, but I definitely have an alliance with Austria. It, what I'm hoping for is that they will come in and fight on my behalf because that really needs to happen <laughs> because once this um, revolution starts, which again, I anticipate, here it comes. Okay, you're going to see it's like the whole dang country. I mean, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. So I don't really, what am I going to do, fight against myself? Um, so we're going to... I'm going to hold the revolution off as long as I can, um, but that's not going to be for very long. Okay, I think this is going to push us over the edge. We just, yeah, there it is. Okay, so the revolution has gone full revolution. Oh, well done. You've just completed your first objective and are now on the way to, uh, okay, I'm not sure what I did, but, um... Okay, revolution is upon us. Political movement disbanded. Whatever. Is it because what we... I don't know what, what happened, what I just completed. Okay, um, so here we have the, uh, the aristocratic revolt. They're 88, I'm 28, it's not a whole lot. But the hope is, okay, we've got north germany and then i mean my ally should be austria should be allied to me so aren't they yeah they're still allied to me so all right so let's get into the um diplomatic uh phases here and uh see what we're gonna do we'll get everybody my my whopping uh, 28 people mobilized. Sure, why not? And uh, not sure where we're gonna go, but uh, you know what? We'll we'll get to the diplomatic phase. Let's fast forward to that. Okay, Austria looks like they're gonna straight abandon me, uh, which sucks. Uh, but let's go ahead and get um, sway with call ally. Yeah, here we go. All right, let's go ahead and get Northern Germany in here. All right, so now we're looking a lot healthier. Now, why I can't get Austria to do that, who, who is literally my ally, uh, is kind of beyond me. I don't know what they're up to, but they're gonna, they're gonna abandon me, I'm sure. Okay, so we got lots of nastiness up here. Like, I don't, I don't really care. Oh, good. <laughs> now we we get to advance our our, our legal agenda. Uh, so that sounds good to me. And of course, it only gave me the ten percent. Whatever. So things are red. Things are ugly. Again, uh, my research. I, I'm not really sure there was a true military revolution like we're doing right now, but we're gonna do like a real revolution, right? So um, let's let's get started and uh, come back in uh, maybe maybe during some of the battles or, or at the end. All right, so far so good. The numbers are looking pretty good on the fronts. Uh, this is probably because of my allies. There's not a ton of allies here. They're kind of like, all right, whatever. And then I love um, sneaking around the, the back door here uh, and, and just pushing the, all this... Uh, territory in here. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do about this debt. Uh, I really don't know what to do about it. 
But uh, so I think we're going to pull this off. We'll see what happens in terms of the actual law passing. If they if they revolution occurred in protest of this, you know, does it automatically pass? Do you just, does it keep going? Because it's still going. Like I'm still in the early phases of it. So um, you know, we'll we'll have to see what happens with this. Okay, and so um, it worked. We succeeded. Uh, we're in default. Lovely. Oh, gosh. All right, we'll deal with that later. Um, this did happen in 1908 as opposed to 1910, and specifically the parliamentary-ness uh, passed. And so it wasn't, again, necessarily... I believe there was military involved. I believe there was a military conflict. Um, I welcome correction, anybody who wants to educate me on that. Uh, so anyway, um, this, yeah, here we go, yay. Uh, so, but really what we're after is the uh, transition to, uh, again, unfortunately, presidential republic, ho hopefully uh, parliamentary. We're right there in the adoption phase, so it really could happen. Uh, let's just keep going, and we got to deal with all this uh, nonsense that we're going through right now. And there you have it. There is a presidential republic, so we will consider the young Turk uh, Committee of Union and Progress Revolution 1908 to be successfully over. Now, one of the things that happened quite a bit prematurely, uh, which is not historically accurate, is you will now notice that we are no longer the Ottoman Empire. We are now Turkey. That is not historically accurate. Turkey did not become... Well, it wasn't named Turkey, I, I believe, until 1923. Uh, so there's quite a bit that needs to happen until then. But for now, we're going to go ahead and wrap this video up in advance of our final set of events, World War I, uh, and also the uh, Turkish independence, and really the formation of the modern-day borders of Turkey as we know it today. We're seeing it on the map now. Again, that's, that's uh, let's see, what are we, 11, 12 years too soon? Uh, but I think what happens is the game just automatically does that when you're no longer a monarch, a monarchy. Uh, so anyway, thank you everyone for watching, and we are winding down not only the Victoria 3 uh, Turkey series, but the entire Turkey Mega series. One more video to go. Thank you for sticking with me, and then we are going to start on the new England to America series. I'm looking forward to it, where we will start again in Crusader Kings 3. We'll see you next time.